Hi everyone, it's 314 Reactor here. This week we've seen the release of Halo 4 on the Master Chief Collection. The full release is now out, so this video is just going to go over how to get reshade with the ray tracing global illumination shader by Marty McFly installed. First you go to reshade.me here, click on download and download the latest version, which as of the 17th of November 2020 is 482. Download that. And then you go into the link in the description, which will take you to this page here on the reshade forum, which will guide you through what the ray tracing shader is and how to get it. You'll need to sign up to Mike McFly's Patreon and then once you're signed up to their Patreon you'll be able to then gain access to their Discord where you'll be allowed to download the latest beta version of the RTGI shader. A lot of people have asked me questions about whether this is actually ray tracing. It is ray tracing, it's just within screen space. Reshade isn't simply just a filter, it is a bit more complicated than that. In the link in the description you can see this explanation here which will go over how it works works and why it is a form of ray tracing. Any questions about that, go to the link, read this. Anyway, with both of those downloaded, let's go to how we actually install it. So you want to grab the reshade setup file here, open that up, and then you want to click to select a game, imagine installation, click on browse, and then you want to go to where the Master Chief Collection is installed and go to the MCC binaries Win64 folder, put that in the address. And you want to select the MCC Win64 shipping exe, and I've already got it installed there, so hit update, otherwise it will say install. This first page, I just hit check all, and then the rest I just let uh, sit on default. It should automatically select DirectX 10, 11, 12, which is correct for this game. Wait for that to download and install, and that's done. And then you want to grab the latest RTGI shader which is 1702 as of the 17th of November. Open that up and then you want to go to the reshade dash shaders folder that's now appeared in here. Just drag those two folders across, place files in the destination and then go in here and then you should see there's a QUINT folder. There is a DitherFX file you can chuck in there as well. I don't think it's necessary for the ray tracing shader, but you can get it on the Discord. Someone in there should be able to give it to you and if you really want to put that in just for completion, just chuck that DitherFX file into that folder. Alrighty, so with all that installed, we should be able to boot up the game and see how it looks. I have got a configuration file from the flighting and we'll see if we can make any tweaks. So I've also had a comment from someone called CJDK uh, and they've said that you can enable something called a material type. I've tried to enable this in game, but I realize you can't. You need to do it in the actual INI file in the preprocessor definitions. And I've also enabled infinite bounce. So I think what the material type does is unlock extra settings for setting reflect and roughness for every surface. Uh, it's a global setting, so it won't work too well in areas where things aren't supposed to be reflective, but for the more metallic levels in Halo 4, it should look pretty good. Infinite bounces, I'm not entirely sure what that does, but I'm gonna switch it on and see if it does anything. So as you can see here, you need to go into the INI file, preprocess definitions, put in material type equals one, and then a comma, and then infinite underscore bounces equals one. And that should enable it in game. So with that enabled, let's dive right in and see what we can tweak and see if we can make Halo 4 look a bit more reflective and metallic. Alrighty, so here we are in game. I've got pre-configured file here running about 63 frames a second. So if we load up here, you can see there's now a new couple of options here for material, that's specular and roughness. So if we go to the lighting channel, we can see exactly what they're doing. So the default for roughness is one. It's made the surfaces look a lot more diffuse because they're rougher, but the lower you set the roughness setting, the more reflective it becomes, the more shiny it becomes. So right at the very bottom, 0 0.05, everything is super shiny and super reflective here, as you can see. Specular just tones that down quite a bit. So you still got reflections, but it's toning down the bounce lighting, I think. If we keep uh, specular at one and roughness at 0 0.5, we can see in the regular lighting channel here, that there's considerable amount of reflections in the ground. So now you can see the reflection of that box there. You can see all the reflections of these pods. And you can see these little bits of ice here look a bit odd, but the metal itself looks pretty good. So if we go back here and we tone up the roughness to one, you can see how it smooths out all those reflections. And as we tone that down, you can see the reflections really kick in. So you can see that doorway kick in around there. So I didn't know about this before. This is brand new to me. So thank you to uh, CJ 
DK for dropping the message on that and letting me know how to do it. Now that's enabled, we have a little bit of extra stuff to play around with. So what I'm gonna do is keep specular at one. I think 0.05 is probably a little too low. So I'm gonna crank that up to about three. And if you look in the lighting channel, you can still see there's reflections and stuff going on here. Maybe we can crank it down to 20 and get away with that. That way we have lots and lots of reflections, lots of metallic looking stuff. So before I've used the screen space reflections shader, but this uh, gives us sort of more natural diffuse sort of reflections. A little bit less taxing because it's just using the ray tracing that's already there and it keeps it compacted into one shader, which is really, really cool. So I'm quite happy with that. You can see the little reflection of the torch down the ground. You can see, gone. You can see not only is it now adding extra shadowing and lighting with the ambient occlusion, but it's now also adding some really nice reflections on the ground. I have toned down the uh, bounce lighting intensity a little bit. I've also noticed that with infinite bounces on, there is something called next bounce weight, which is currently at zero. So we're running at the six frames a second here. So if we turn the effect off, we then go all the way up to 98 frames a second. And we're locked onto that. Turn it back on, it takes us down to 67, 68 frames. So it's just over 30 frames cost. And I'm running on an RTX 2080 with a Core i7-6700K. Let's, uh, this could be the first time me experimenting with next bounce weight. So let's turn that up a little bit. Whoa. So I've cranked that up all the way to two. And the frame rate is at 63. So that's cost four frames and everything just seems to have gotten a lot brighter. It doesn't seem too costly, but it does just seem to make things a bit brighter. I think that's just because it's bouncing more light around. Oh yeah, oh my God, yeah, you can see the gun reflecting up there. So that's kind of intense. Bounce lighting intensity, let's bounce weight right up. So it's definitely bound to bounce lighting intensity. So with that at two, play around with bounce lighting a bit more. So what does that look like in the regular channel? Hmm, not bad actually. We turn that back down and then Bounce lighting intensity back up. So I think there might be a balance here between bounce, bounce lighting intensity and the next bounce weight. It seems like you can get better definition in the uh, like reflections on the ground here. But if you turn that to zero and then just turn the bounce lighting intensity up, it doesn't really increase the definition of what's happening on the ground. So I think what we can do is, if we go back to the lighting channel, see so yeah, if we turn it up to three, it's just, it's very intense, but it's not too well defined. Whereas if we turn that down to point three, Five, and then turn the next bounce weight right up. Let's experiment with this. So let's, let's put bounce lighting intensity at 0.75 and then turn the next bounce weight up, max that out. They got a normal. Whoa, yeah, that's pretty intense. You can really see the uh, light blurring a bit as you move around. Whoa, okay. So maybe let's turn that down a bit. Yeah, it seems like it's always gonna add a bit of a blur onto that. Bounce lighting intensity back up to three and then notch this up just a little bit. Go to the regular channel. Bounce lighting intensity, we turn it down a bit more to 2.5. And then a little bit of extra bounce weight. I think that's a good balance there. And if you turn down the bounce lighting intensity just a bit more, two. Interesting, let's see how blurry that is. Not too noticeable. Yeah, that looks to give some good reflections in the ground. So this is just the opening area. Turn the ray tracing off. And then back on. Yeah, not bad. So let's move forward, see if we can find some enemies. I really want to see how enemies reflect and how jackal shields and stuff reflect in the metal. So this is a cool area. You can really see the reflections of the lights in the floor there. So we turn it off and then turn it back on. You can see all that extra shading there on the ground reflecting those lights. Really makes that floor look very metallic. Really, really nice. I'm really glad the setting was recommended to me because I wouldn't have found it otherwise. And it's uh, really, really cool. So in areas where there's lots of fog or, or smoke effects, it appears to, like, the reflections just shine right through it. Like glass, so... Like this elite here, he just looks like he's made of ice. Yeah, that's an issue. Because the fog, I think, is covering off the colours of the textures. But then, the effect is coming through with the reflections through the fog, so all you're getting is pure reflection, so it just looks like ice. But again, let's turn the ray tracing off here. Then back on. So you can see the enemy's reflections in the ground there. So once you've got it tweaked pretty nicely, in these areas, it looks really good. Those reflections there. You can see the, uh... Plasma hitting and reflecting as well. All real time. So that is the forward onto Dawn, which is obviously a very metallic level. 
Oh, look at that as well. That's oh, that's really nice. So let's go on to a more Forerunner centric level and see how the Forerunner tech looks with this on. First of all, we'll do, we'll open this blast shield actually. The good news is these Covenant aren't outfitted like standard military. It's possible we just came across a rogue salvage ship. Oh yeah, that's cool. You can see the plasma reflection there from that. That is awesome. So I'm definitely going to go back to the other Halos and enable this. I think Halo 1 would look really cool with this enabled. So you can see in the ground there, there's the, uh, like that force field is reflecting. Turn it off, completely gone. Back on, there it is. So we can turn roughness down just a bit more. To 15. Oh yeah, even more reflective. The trouble is, as it goes off the screen, obviously it stops reflecting because it is based on screen space. So that is a bit of a limitation, but it's not too bad. So, like I said, let's move on to a more forerunner centric level. Okay, so here we are in a bit more of a forerunnery sort of zone. So you can see there's really, really nice reflections on the ground here. And there's a jackal around here somewhere as well. We're about to see their shield being reflected. There we go. Look at that. As well as all the plasma as well. And that thing there being reflected. Works really, really nicely with the uh, metallic forerunner design. You can see out here there's more natural landscapes as well. We'll take a look at that later with this on. So, just for the effect on. Let me turn it off. And then back on. Really, really good. Complements it really well, especially this sort of area. So you can see the uh, reflected, uh, like, ammo casing thing there. And the grenades in the ground. You turn it off. Completely gone. Back on. And the shadowing, the reflections on that really add to the depth of the scene. And you can see these areas too. Really, really complemented by it. Turn the effect off. And then back on. So you can see it's oh, just so nicely reflected down there. See, without it, it just looks plasticky. Very plasticky. And with it, oh god, that is so, so good. Really beautiful. Some more good jackal shields being reflected there. Really smooth stuff. Let's see what happens in an experiment if we just turn that roughness right down. See, that just looks really crazy reflective. I'm tempted to leave it at that, but it does look a bit glitchy at some points. Let's just turn it up a bit. Let's turn it up to 15. Specular. See what happens when we move that around. I ideally want to keep that up at 1, really. At least for these areas. Another great example of a reflection there. This little button on the ground here. No reflection at all. Back on. There it is. Ooh, yeah. Awesome. So here's a really nice room that shows off a lot of shading and global illumination and just general reflections as well. Just really, just gorgeous. And then you turn the effect off and it just loses quite a bit of detail. Including that like energy beam there in the middle being reflected and pulsing away on the ground there. And all the shadowing from this platform there. If we go into the lighting channel and have a look around, you can see a lot more what's going on there. So you got all the shadowing going around there from this platform, all the reflections in the ground there, all the shadowing and shading all over that. So we know for sure these areas look really, really good with the lighting set up this way, but how does a more natural area look? Let's jump onto another level. So here we are at the start of infinity and already you can see some of the trees are a bit too shiny. So you can see a bit of extra reflectiveness on the chief's armor there, but it's not too obvious. So let's skip into the actual level. So as you can see, it doesn't look too bad, but there's some shininess on the trees there, where they just look a bit too polished. It's showing off some of the polygons, a bit too bright. So there may be a way to balance out the settings between the metallic areas and these areas. But what I would recommend is going to the settings and just setting up a effect toggle key for me it's numpad plus so that way when i get to an area like this i just hit the button and it goes back to normal as we go through this area you'll see 
in the ground there, the grass and stuff was reflecting that enemy there, and it didn't look too good. Because obviously grass, unless it's really, really wet, isn't really going to be reflecting like that. So definitely in these areas, if you look up there, you can definitely see it's just making the trees look really odd. And if we find some water over here, you can really see how it's showing off the polygons of the water as it moves around. You can see even more in the lighting channel. So that's not great. I'd recommend, yeah, turning the RTGI off for these sort of areas. I think they said they were working on a way to uh, define multiple materials, perhaps by color or something. That would be pretty good because then you could turn down the specular and uh, turn up the roughness on these sort of areas and get rid of that reflective look on grass and rocks and stuff. Anyway, let's go back to another level where the effect is more likely to work. So let's try a bit of shutdown. That should have some uh, good metallic -y indoor areas. So here we are on the infinity. Uh, the scenario we've seen before in the flight, but now with these extra reflections enabled. So the effect on. Let's turn the effect off. And then back on. So you can see the computer terminals reflecting there. Everything looks a lot more metallic-y. As you'd expect. Hey, over here. Reflections of uh, characters in the ground there as well. So if we have a look at where these warthogs are sat. Turn the effect off. And then back on. It's really cool seeing the cars reflected in the ground like that. Same with the tanks. The warthogs themselves have a, uh, the effect applied to them. So you can see the shadowing and reflections on it there. Some reflections in the windscreen a little bit there. Just kind of diffuse lighting and shadowing as well. Everything feels a lot, a lot more present in the scene. So here we are in the final level of the game, another very forerunnery area. Again, there's still a bit of the HUD there as well, even without Cortana interference. Turn the effect off. And again, it all looks a bit plasticky, a bit flat. And back on, it looks really, really good. And again, because it's all real time, you can see the door moving in the reflection there. So overall, again, this is another area that really, really benefits from this uh, ray tracing. You can really see all that additional lighting and shadowing. Just the reflections of these storage containers as well there. It's another area where things look a bit too icy through the fog. So overall, this looks pretty amazing with Halo 4, and I can't wait to try these new settings on the original Halos and a few other games, especially Unreal Tournament as well. Because as we've seen, in certain areas, it just really complements the environments. So thanks again to CJDK for letting me know about that in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe, leave a comment, hit the little bell, it really helps the channel.
Hope everyone's staying safe. Stick around for the next video. I'm always making videos on tech projects and video games. I'll see you in the next one.